Chapter 20 The Green Caravan Jim walked to the sound of horses, a thudding of hooves that made the earth shake. He ran to the edge of his field and scrambled through the thickness of trees till he came to a wide clearing in another field. There must have been 20 or more horses being exercised, all in a ring. In the centre of the ring, a man stood with a whip, lashing the ground with it and shouting out commands, which made the horses stop, rear, turn and trot in the other direction. They were nothing like the work horses that Jim had seen pulling carriages, or lame Betty's bony old knock-kneed dairy horse. These horses were powerful and lively, high-stepping like dancers. At the other end of the field was a monster tent. Men and children were shouting and laughing out loud, hauling on the ropes to pull it upright. The tent was like a huge green bed that wouldn't lie still, and all around the sides of the field were vans, all painted with bright colours. The biggest of them had words painted on them, and Jim knew for sure that they would say, Juglini's Champion Circus. The van had a green door with a brass knocker, and a funnel at the back with smoke curling from it. From the back window, a woman gazed out at him, as if she were daydreaming, not really noticing him at all. Jim guessed that this would be Madame Juglini herself. He remembered how her children had danced and waved to him from the riverbank, and instinctively he put up his hand to feel for the rope that had tied him round his neck. But he was free of that, forever, he hoped. A wonderful smell of cooking arose from the van. Jim couldn't remember when he'd last eaten. Whenever it was, it had only been scraps from Grammy Nick's pockets. As Jim watched the woman disappeared and was replaced by two small children. Jim recognised them as the two younger ones who had been carried on their parents' shoulders the day before. They caught sight of him and pointed at him, laughing. The woman opened the door to the van. Her children squirmed onto the step in front of her and giggled at Jim. Please, ma'am, Jim began. If he hadn't been so hungry, he would have run back into the trees to hide, but the smell of food was stronger and sweeter than ever. He waved his hands to where the men were heaving and straining at the tent ropes. I've come for a job, if you'll give me one, he faltered. Memories of Nick came floating back to him. What have I done, he thought. What's happened to Nick? Immediately, hunger chased those thoughts away. Eat first, and then think. That was best. I'll help put the tent up, I'll muck out the horses, and I'll clean them up bright and smart. And I don't want money, missus. Don't want money? Madame Juglini frowned down at him. I've never heard that before. If you'll feed me, missus, Jim said, all his confidence going, I'll do anything. He gazed at the little van and his old longing rose up in him again. How good it must be to live in this green van with the shining brass knocker and the chimney curling out smoke. He dug his hands deep in his pockets. There was nothing more he could say. A boy came running across the field to the caravan he stopped short, staring at Jim. Madame Juglini went back up the steps. Antonio, you'll bring the boy inside. Jim followed the boy Antonio into the van and gazed around at the bright cushions and curtains, at the small crackling fire in its burner and at all the neat shiny fittings. He had never seen anything that looked so much like home. He was conscious now of his filthy hands and broken, blackened nails and of the tattered state of his clothes. Madame Juglini gave him some food and watched him while he ate. She knew the white marks around his eyes for what they were and sighed. We have a busy day. We have a costume to make for the strongest man in the universe. The last strongest man ran away with the flying lady and took his loincloth with him. The children giggled. You don't sew, I suppose, she asked Jim. Jim could have told her about the weeks he'd spent making sacks in the workhouse, but he daren't in case it was a trick question. He shrugged. I might be able to, he said. 
The small children laughed at him. Mr Juglini came in, rubbing his hands together and tousled Jim's hair as if he was quite used to seeing him sitting at his table. A cloud of black dust rose from Jim's head and Antonio pretended to dodge away from him, coughing. This boy says he wants a job, the wife said. Mr Juglini sat down opposite Jim and stared at him. Then he leaned towards him. Now, tell me true, he asked. Have you run away from home? His black eyes seemed to burn right inside Jim's. He felt the scorch of tears and tried to rub them away. I used to live on a coal lighter, he said. I, I think the lighter man might have died, sir. I think he might have got trapped. It was... I, um, I, I did... Madame Juglini and her husband exchanged glances. He can whiten the harnesses with Antonio. There's a job. Let's see how well he does it. Juglini smoothed his moustache and went quickly out of the van. Jim gazed after him, so many words tumbling about in his head that he couldn't find a single one to say.